In today's video, we are going to try to replicate a painting I did a few videos back using a swipe method and a rake method. A viewer had written me asking me if it was possible to replicate this look here after I had done multiple techniques trying to figure out what I liked better. So today I'm going to show you how I think we can get this look by doing these different techniques. So thank you for joining me, my friend, and let's get started. So first of all, the paints I'm using today and how I mixed them will be listed in the description below. There will also be a helpful tutorial to show you how to mix paints should you need that. Most of these paints are primary elements, a dry paint system, mixed along with a few tube paint colors. I have beautiful colors like cinnamon brown, mandarin citrine, spiced pumpkin, and carmine. The colors I'm using that are just regular tube paints would be burnt umber, pyro orange, pyro red, and an Arteza gold. All of these paints are mixed with a bloom style recipe, and I will be using a cell activator using Australian Floetrol. Links and discount codes for all of these products will be in the description below, so be sure to check that out. And also, be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. So I'm going to be working with two tools today. This and this little frosting spreader. So I love the big gap in between the teeth. For what I'm about to do today, you want something that has a wider gap like this right here would not create the same design. The, the division between the lines of color would be too narrow. So you want something bigger like this. And obviously not everybody has access to this, but everybody has access to this. A paintbrush handle. One of your bigger paintbrushes that has a wider end on it um, will work, but you would have to do one line at a time versus, you know, all of these being done at once. Or you can go to your Dollar Tree and get one of these really wide tooth combs uh, for, I think this is like a detangler comb. This works really well also. Now I'm going to put down some white house paint from Walmart called Color Place. I heard they discontinued this. Whatever brand they replaced it with will work fine. This is right from the, the gallon container into this smaller one for easier holding. But there's nothing added to this, okay? No pouring medium, no water, no nothing. And what I'm going to do is just coat the entire canvas by tilting it around. Today I'm not using a spinner. There's no need for one. Okay, so unlike the last painting where I put color down here and I blew it around and I swiped it and then eventually ended up doing the rake through it, this painting we're starting from scratch and we need to replicate that design. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to place all of our color in the center here and we're going to swipe in one direction right down towards the bottom, all right? Now my paints, I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned or not, these are mixed with the Bloom recipe. If you need that recipe, I will put it in the description. I will put a video in the description that, you know, has all the mixing instructions and all of that, okay? Another thing I would mention is you can also do this with a skewer, what I'm about to do. Create the divided lines, that raked look. All right, so here's what I'm gonna start off. I'm gonna start off with the dark brown. I wanna put my lighters, my lighter colors up towards the top 
more so that they don't get buried by my dark brown or, you know, this dark red I have. The, the pigments, the primary elements are semi-transparent. So you need those to kind of like lay on top of opaque colors so that you see them the most. All right. So as I said, nothing fancy. I'm just going to kind of squiggle some color in here. Not a straight line. Just going to make a, a big patch of color. Then we'll go ahead and add our chestnut. Nope. <laughs> I can't remember what brown that was. I told you in the beginning. It's one of the browns. I want a lot of brown and red in this painting. So put a little bit more here. Just like that. And I will continue adding the colors. All right, so the next step is going to be, I'm going to take my spreader. I'm going to put some white cell activator on the back. That's made with Australian Floetrol and Amsterdam Titanium White Acrylic Paint. Just those two items. I'm going to spread it out nice and evenly. And I'm going to do approximately two to two and a half swipes here. I'm gonna aim as best as I can for the edge of this and pull it straight down. Okay, so here we go. Just like that. And I still have to tilt, so I'm not worried about missing areas or anything like that, okay? We're gonna wipe off our scraper in between each swipe. So now to make my life easier, I'm going to spin this around. Just like this. And I'll give you a nice little side view of this swipe. So again, I'll go ahead and put some cell activator on the back of my knife. I am not going to worry about this edge right here because I'm going to be tilting. We're, that's not gonna be there. We're gonna stretch all of this out, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna run my rake through it. However, I wanna make sure there's enough white paint here so that I can pull some of it through my design, okay? So I'm gonna add just a, a barrier of the white house paint right along here, just to be safe. Just like that, okay? Then we're gonna take our rake, frosting spreader, whatever we're calling it, <laughs> and we are going to go right through the design. So this extra white paint was not needed at all. Whatever was on the canvas would have been plenty. All I did was drag a bunch of white paint over my beautiful colors. So you'll see right here, I aim the scraper right onto the white canvas part, not that big puddle of paint, and it works much better.
essentially what I'm doing is creating a bunch of divided sections so that when I tilt, you'll see those lines flowing through the painting. So now I need to make up my mind what I'm going to do here. Am I going to try to re-swipe over that? Let's try to re-swipe. I'm pushing down kind of hard. Hey, look at that. I got it all to come back up. That is awesome. So that problem was solved. <laughs> Let me give you, I didn't give you a look at this before I chopped through it like a lunatic. So see, I was able to go back over that area, put a little more pressure, and then, uh, you know, get the color to come back up. I'll show you these pretty colors, though, because they are gorgeous. They look absolutely amazing under resin, I'll tell you that. All right, so let me get you back in the tripod. So I'll take my comb, go through that area again. What a mess this, this technique makes, huh? So I'm gonna just start up here this time. Right, and then we're gonna start tilting. So let's go this way first. Get some of that excess paint off. Right, this way. And I want to come back here to this end to get rid of this area. So I'm going to come back that way. I'm going to give it a hard tilt like this. All right. Then I'm going to come back this way and start stretching and stretching, except I don't like that area there. So we're going to get rid of that white area on the edge. All right. Now we're going to start stretching and stretching and stretching and stretching. Yeah, I really, really wish I used black with these colors. Come down this side. So you've got to get rid of this area. So I'm speeding this up here. It's just a lot of slow movement and really getting those colors to stretch and those sections that we created getting those to open up to expose the color So you're getting kind of like that stripey look. Now the other one that I did had a lot more white in it. I didn't use as much color, but I didn't want to use the same, the, do the same thing and create the same painting for a second time. So you have to envision this with a little more white in it. And it's the same kind of technique. Let me show you. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be showing you this painting, this one here resined in just a minute. So see how there's a, I used a lot more white and a lot less color. In this one here, I used a lot more color, but you still have those, those squiggly lines. They're just in red and uh, gold now, <laughs> instead of black and white like this one. But anyway, 
So adding that extra white paint was not needed. Avoid that step. Just put the colors down in the center, swipe them down to one side, take your comb or whatever you're gonna use, run it through the colors as you saw me do, and then the tilt around until you're happy with what you have, okay? So let me show you what this looks like. I don't know if by the time you see this video, this painting will be dry enough for me to resin. If it is, you will see it after this clip right here. If not, I'll show it to you in the next video, okay? This one, although it looks, you know, just semi-typical, is absolutely stunning because I have those primary elements in there. So let me show you them in this one. So here it is with the light off. Of course, it's very hard for me to show you these things here through a lens because they look totally different. That's why I like to do this and show you really what I'm seeing. This looks like almost like amber flowing through the painting. Even these areas that look like they're just washed out, they are not. They're gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And now let's see what a difference a coat of chaos resin makes. And also, Stay till the end of this video to see a sneak peek of Wednesday's video because I think you're going to love it. All right, let me just show you how beautiful this turned out. See how those colors light up once you got the resin on them? So I have one layer of resin on here. I have to do another. But boy, oh boy, is it swanky. Let me put it down here and slowly go over it so you can see all the little like sparkles of color in between the lines there. It's a really beautiful piece. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to click like. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing. If you're interested in buying this painting, you can email me art by Tammy at yahoo.com. It's an 18 inch round. And I'm hoping to get that auction video out soon. We're going to be doing a live auction here. I just got tied up with some family stuff. So um, that will be out shortly. I love you all my friends. I will see you Wednesday 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And until then Happy pouring. <laughs>